Welcome back to the Hockey Shop Source for Sports. We're down here in Goalie Utopia, hanging out with Cam Matwiv, and we're about to go over the true L20.2 pads. We've got gloves and blocker. Truth is, glove and blocker, am I right? Hasn't really changed. Nope. Sort of the same sort of staples that we've always New graphic. had. 580, 590, 600, same break, same good feel. Correct. Same palm options. That's a pro palm, a little tougher to close. I got a pro palm as well. That's a pro palm? That's a pro palm. Wow, you've been doing a little breaking in, hey? That's nice. Mm, fresh off the wall. I like it. Okay, well, let's get into the pads because that's where the changes are uh, from the 20.1 to the 20.2. We were recently talking with Lucas Dostal, uh, Anaheim Ducks prospect. He was telling me some of the things that he actually liked and could feel a difference because when we had the 20.1, when we pulled it off the wall and put it side by side, you know, visually, not a ton of difference between these pads, but there are some big differences in terms of how they've been built. Cam, walk us through them. So we'll start with the knee stack itself first. So true to stiffen up the knee stack to create a better rotation and drive down to the ice and a little bit more stability between the two. Keeping up with the knee area of the pad, they've also added a one inch nylon strap. Um, what this can do, so the elasticity, the elasticity of an elastic strap inherently has some give to it. When you go with a nylon strap, there's no give to that nylon. So in theory, you're getting a more consistent and solid drive down. We've seen this kind of come about, a few NHL guys have kind of had some of those nylon straps flopped out on their pads and kind of gone consistent with it. Um, Kevin, you've got some actual insight on this a little bit too as well. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean I've seen lots of, I mean, this is an old Francois Lair thing. Um, his guys have had this forever. Um, even when they switch brands into other brands, they've kept it. And it's more about having a fixed end point. Uh, you talk about energy transfer. The reality is when you drop to the ice, and we saw this research done by CCM, you actually want, if the pad separates from the knee a little bit on the way down, you'd actually get the pad to the ice faster. So we've sort of seen the science on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so having a little bit of a gap is a good thing. Where we want, what we really want to eliminate and where I think a nylon strap at least, I mean, I'm assuming that was the intention here because it's the intention of all the NHL guys I know that use it, is to have a fixed end point. Uh -huh. Where if you're going to slide off a, a knee stack and hit the ice, it's going to be because that elastic gives when you get to the end of the stack. You don't want this to be too tight. You want to have a little bit of mobility, but having the ability to sort of have it set up so when you get to that end point, that knee's not going to come off because it's not going to give. Like to me, that having that fixed end point is more important. Than so picture yourself going to go for an tight. overdrive slide and that knee being pushed along the side. So it's now again stopping that slide off that potentially can't. Yeah, it just keeps there. you on exactly. the stack better. All right. Fixed so, end point. Fixed end point. It's been one okay. of our favorite theories for a while. So. Continuing on forward, they have changed the shape of the pad between the two a little bit overall. So if you zoom in on the side a little bit, you can see it's actually just a little bit of a thinner profile uh, on, on the, the boot. Yes, correct. Um, continuing with the back side of the pad. So True's fast rotation strap has changed with these two and is also different than the 20 point or 12.2 as well. So with the 20.1, the fast rotation pad was segmented and kind of wrapped around a little bit more. Whereas the 20.2, they actually went away from that um, segmentation a little bit and created just a little bit of a flatter system and also added in a little bit of a thicker pillow as well. So this is to help aid the seal of the pad when the pad's actually pushing in the overdrive position as well. Um, in terms of the fast rotation strap, so the 12.2 is a little bit longer in terms of overall fit. 20.1 is the same, a little bit longer. Actually, we're more segmented. So that's where you see it there as well. Um, so again, a little bit shorter, aiding in that connectivity of that shin to that pad as well. Um, something that we talked about in previous uh, videos, you know, that more connectivity, the pad helping to aid in that rebound as well as making sure that that leg's right up against that shin when you're down in the butterfly. Well, and that's the one part that Lucas Dostal told us that he liked in the 20.2 compared to the 20.1. Just uh, the, the Ducks farm team was up when we were just chatting gear and he felt like um, he didn't have that connection in 20.1 down sort of through the top of the skate in through the shin and he felt like it was a lot better in the 20.2. So it sounds like that combination of thinning out that boot, changing that angle up a little bit more, and having a, uh, a fast rotation system that doesn't go as far down into the bottom of the pad is really what accomplishes that for him. Correct, and, and you kind of alluded to it there and stole the thunder a little bit. Yes, that new boot shape 
Um, so this is closer to the 12.2. This now allows the sizing of the pads to be very similar between the 12.2 and the 20.2. Uh, in terms of overall fitment wise, whereas we were experiencing you know, quite a bit of a difference with the uh, 20.1. Um, overall flex is still there, you know, something that we've really seen keen to, this is that same soft, super flexible boot that you get out of the 12.2. Um, something that can obviously be changed up um, if you were wanting something just a little bit stiffer. Um, very, very flat, not really a whole lot of boot channel to this. Again, the ability there is that that skate is going to drop out of that pad just a little bit easier, get it closer to the ice, be able to get that push off quicker. And fitment, so this is closer to 12.2. Does it fit a little bit, looks like a little bit taller, or does that change on, based on how it goes on top of the skate with that flat boot? Yeah, it depends a little bit on, on your, again, boot setup for the overall pad, you know, how tight that fast rotation strap ends up being, but the sizing is pretty close between the two. All right. Uh, any other changes innovations things that we're seeing different here from two in this model that's the thing they haven't changed the recipe too too much we're just getting a little bit of that forward advancement again quite a few custom options in terms of the flex profile for the pad that you you know what one would suit you best um customization is still there we are getting the occasional order here and there if you do have some questions about potentially getting an order in you can call me at 604-589-8299 or 1-800-567-7790 almost forgot it there and in the meantime, though, if you want something off the rack, you do have it in stock, 20.2. Correct. Uh, see, it, see it here, see it here. Domestic so, 20.2, there still is a couple sets, but we will have, hopefully, an import version soon. Stay an tuned. An import version from True. Dun, dun, dun. Look forward to seeing that. Nice cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the blockiest blocker. Dun, dun.